Happy Saturday, everybody. Taylor Swift has a real estate problem. It's not just hers. I posted on Twitter and it went viral. Now, this condo complex, this is called the Adelicia. Taylor Swift owns in this complex. She's owned, I think it was one of her first real estate purchases. And the interesting thing about this condos is the gap between what you could rent and what you could buy for. Now, this sparked a ginormous debate but it highlighted something that resonated with pretty much everybody in America, which is why it got almost a million views, 862,000. And Tom Keen from Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg Surveillance, retweeted it. Now we're gonna come back and talk about why some of the things that you've been told just aren't true, like rents always going up or mortgage rates are going to drop. And then we're gonna come back and, and look at this one, value this one. One, four, seven, five. Anyways, but first I want to talk about this Bloomberg article. It's highlight. There's a couple things I want you to realize here. The first is, is that the consumer is starting to get squeezed because of high inflation and because of high interest rates. And it's starting to manifest itself in credit card delinquencies. The percent of credit card balance is going delinquent. And you can see of course, starting in 2022 when interest rates increased, it's been stacking up ever since, but look, it's now at a point that we haven't seen since 2011, and the 90 days late is also disturbing. It's breaking out well above where it's been in, in, in more than a decade. And so what does this mean? That one, the Fed's watching this. They're concerned. I, you know, I can tell you that you know, if things start unraveling, they're going to drop interest rates, but that's just going to stoke inflation. There's going to be inflation, potentially a recession. I just don't believe that there's going to be much deflation or price drops with this next recession uh, based on how inflationary things have been so far. But that's just my personal take. Bloomberg, mortgages stuck around 7% force rapid rethink of the American dream. Now, why are they talking about this? And it's because rates have defied expectations. Now, if you are on my channel at all, for over a year, I've been warning that rates may not drop, okay? I'm not saying that they won't, but the reason I've been warning that rates won't drop really has nothing to do with mortgages. People think that somehow the US economy revolves around the housing market, and I would, I would disagree with that. I actually think that there's a bigger driver of rates in its US debt and deficit spending. If you go back in the 70s, you can see that. And so because of that, rates may not drop all that much. Even if they do drop, uh, it's certainly not going to be, I mean, there's just going to be so much inflation. So we just got to pick, you know, do we want lower rates and high inflation or do we want higher rates and low inflation and high unemployment or a lot of pain or consumer distress? We just have to pick our poison here, guys. And so one of the things that have happened because of this is the rent versus buy calculus. Okay, up until 2022, it almost always made sense to buy a house. Almost always, you would be paying less in a mortgage payment than you would in rent. And all of a sudden, rates went up so much so that it's so much cheaper to rent than to buy. Now, I'm going to show you a few neighborhoods that I pulled out here, including the Adelicia, Creve Hall, West Haven. I'm going to show you some neighborhoods where I did the rent versus buy calculus and normalized it to price per square foot. I'm actually super proud of the charts I'm going to show you. But the point is, is like, you don't have to, you don't have to see those charts. It looks exactly like this. It looks exactly like this in every single one of those neighborhoods. It made sense to buy all the way up till 2022. Now it makes sense to rent. And that's just the calculus, right? I mean, when you factor in not just the mortgage payment, but you've got property tax, insurance, maintenance, all of those things are adding up. And by the way, tax, insurance, and maintenance, those don't, those aren't fixed, okay? Your principal and interest payment are fixed, but taxes, insurance, and maintenance will go up with inflation. So it's not like you're guaranteed for your mortgage payment never to go up. It's just a big chunk of it or the majority of it, depending on where you live, is fixed. And so that does help. Now, this strain is starting to show up in Nashville housing. And we can see, even as today, it looks to me like people are starting to give up on buying, okay? Now, I don't expect this to just completely tank, right? This is demand 
This is contract volume, which is demand for single family homes in greater Nashville. And you can see it's it, last year it was around 2,600 at this time. This year it's 2,435. But I would say that what's going to happen over the next several days isn't going to be a continued decline, but that'll kind of bob back up and just mirror this, but it's going to mirror it about three to 5% lower than where it was last year. And that's interesting to me. We're starting to see lower demand consistently. It's just almost like we're petering out of energy here for the housing market. Now, this doesn't mean that every neighborhood is soft or that there's not as much demand. There's a lot of demand in a lot of neighborhoods, but it is worth noting that it's lower than it was last year. And it's especially lower in this demographic, the under 700,000 existing homes. Okay. These are resale homes that are under 700,000. They don't have the margins to just give away to the buyer to buy down the rate. And they're competing with new builds that can buy for cheaper and give margin to buy down rate. And so what we're seeing is the demand, even though supply is higher, supply is actually higher, which is a bad sign when people are listing into waning demand, but we're seeing demand for the second year in a row be major double digit drops here. 17 down 17% in 2023, down 16% in 2024. And this is for Davidson and Williamson under 700,000. But let's take a look at lease versus buy. Okay. So this is West Haven. And for you all that don't know, West Haven, this is if you come out, here's Nashville and you zoom in, here's Franklin and just west of Franklin is West Haven. It's right here. It's a uh it's been one of my, you know, I used to hate on this neighborhood. It's been one of my favorite neighborhoods. Now I will tell you is struggling a little bit as of recent. I've talked to at least three different people in this neighborhood struggling with their situation. Uh, now I know there's there's going to be those comments where it's like, lower the price, of course, right? But th there's always resistance to that, right? People don't want to lose money on an investment. And you know, I've actually talked to several people that are flipping from selling their house to deciding to rent their house. And you know, personally, I think if you have a low mortgage or no mortgage, I would hang on to Williamson County real estate. There is just, Nashville is booming. There's a lot of inbound migration. Sure, could it change? Absolutely. But I believe that we are very, very strong, um, probably for the same reason that Las Vegas is strong. By the way, guys, Las Vegas is very, very strong housing market right now in spite of some of the, the headwinds. And I think it really, you guys call me crazy, but I think it has to do with not just any migration, but Los Angeles migration. Uh, you know, Los Angeles migration, Las Vegas is one of the biggest winners from Los, Los Angeles migration. And believe it or not, Nashville is too. And I wasn't planning on showing you this, but let me just show you this real quick. You know, when you look at the migration opportunity, Williamson County, 264,000, 264,000 people in Williamson County. When people decide to move to Nashville, they kind of hone in on Williamson County. Now, it's not everybody, but it's certainly a lot of people want to live in Williamson County. And they may decide to go somewhere else for price, but they kind of always start at Williamson. Okay, but look at Los Angeles, 12.8 million people. There's almost double the number of people in Los Angeles. By the way, this is census data, guys. Almost 12.8 million people in Los Angeles. It's almost double what it is in Tennessee. So when you think about people moving in, in that, that migration inbound, I am very bullish on Williamson County. Now, if for some reason you think that it's going to change, you know, you think it's going to reverse or that there's going to be household consolidation, you know, those are all risks to the market. But let's take a look at the lease versus or the rent versus buy dynamic in West Haven. Now, the green dots right here are the rent price per foot and the orange dots are the mortgage payment price per foot. And the way I did this was I calculated, I found all the rents, and then I calculated a similar comp, same number of bedrooms and with 150 square feet of the house. And then I compared the mortgage payment. So I actually feel pretty good about how I calculated this. But what do you notice here, especially when it, it affirms what we're seeing in Bloomberg? What we notice here is from 2014 all the way through 2020, green was almost always on top in every single one of these. And that's what you want to see. You know, any one of these could be a one-off or a mistake, but if it's a trend, if they're all higher than the mortgage payment, you're like, okay, it's a lot higher. But what happens when we get to 2022 when the rates skyrocket? Look at all the orange, almost every single one of these orange is higher than the green. Yeah, there's one exception, but you can see almost every single one of these orange is higher than the green. And that 
is exactly what we were seeing here. There's a flip that happened in 2022. We can see it in the data for West Haven, but it's not just West Haven, guys. Here's one. Here's one for Creve Hall. Okay. Creve Hall, again, you go through 2020, almost 2022, you can see it's changing right here. But look at this. Creve Hall, a dollar a foot to a dollar ten a foot, going up to a dollar thirty, maybe even a dollar forty, dollar fifty in the later years, always above mortgage payment. Always above mortgage payment, where you'd be paying less than a dollar a foot for the majority of the time, all the way through 2021. Now we got to 2021 and 2022 when the bubble picked up. And this, which by the way is kind of when I started getting really bearish on the housing market was when orange started going above green. I started thinking this doesn't make sense anymore. All the way into 2020 and 2021, I loved buying real estate. But by the time we, by the time this, this calculus flipped, it was like, well, why would I want to buy? It doesn't make sense. Very disappointing. But let's go back to, let's go back to the Adelicia here. Okay, so here's the Adelicia. Same concept here, but, but this one's not normalized. This is actually leases. This is lease per month, okay? So this is what's recorded in real tracks. We can see... We had a 5,000 to 6,500 rent range here for the top, lots of 5,000s here. And then we had kind of 2,000 to 2,800 to 3,000 on the bottom going back to 2014. Okay, so we go for 2014, you can see, and look, rent always exceeded what would be the expected payment, which by the way, I included HOA fees in this. I'm pretty proud of how I did this calculation. I'm actually really impressed with how I did this calculation. But the point is, is that even with HOA fees and everything, green, the lease price would be higher than the mortgage payment on a huge, huge chunk of these. Now let's fast forward to today and you can see, which with one major outlier, look higher, 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 higher. Every single one of these mortgage payments is going to be higher. In fact, what's crazy about this is, is that look at these rent payment, rent, rent, rent rates, 2,400, 2,200, 2,800, 2,200, 2,800. They're not much different than what they were 10 years ago. So when someone says that rents only go up, that's not happening everywhere. That's not happening in the Adelicia with the MLS data. Maybe the MLS data is wrong, but I mean, it's, it's licensed agents that are putting these comps in. <laughs> you know. Now, the one that really sticks out to me though is this one right here, 8978 versus 4,000. Now, what makes this so wild is this comp is actually this unit that's for sale right now for 1.5 million. Okay, believe it or not, this actually rented for 4,000 a month in November. Now, it's weird because it rented and then it sold, and so I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so I don't know if it's an actual good comp or not, uh, but when I look at this, the one thing I do know is that there's no comps in MLS data over 4,000 post-2022. So I don't think rents are going up. In fact, I think they're dropping in the Adelicia, or at best, staying flat. Now, the reason that's a problem is let's just use that 4,000 or let's just use 6,500. Even if we use 6,500, the point is, is that the mortgage payment, uh, when it was, when it was done last year, would have been 9,000 a month. If we updated it today, it would be even more than 9,000 a month because our mortgage interest rate is in the sevens and they're trying to sell this for 1.5, which is the highest it's ever sold for. So we're talking about rental comps at 4,000 for a mortgage payment that's probably going to be pushing 10,000. Why would anybody buy that? And that is why this went viral. That's why Bloomberg retweeted it. Uh, I'm just going to say that. I can, I'm going to keep saying that because I'm like so excited about that. I'm going to put that on my resume. Um, anyways, the point is, is like, that's why people, this is resonating and this is all over America. Why would you rent? If you can rent for 2,800, why would you buy for 4,600? The vast majority of Americans are buying a payment. And when they buy a payment, they have to ask themselves, why am I going to buy for thousands more than I can rent? It's a good question, okay? It doesn't mean you're stupid for buying. There are all kinds of reasons that are non-financial for buying. And there are even some financial perspective reasons. Okay. Some people want to get into a market and hold it for 30 years and they know that that's where they want to be. And they have, you know, there's, there's all kinds of reasons. Okay. And a lot of people are looking at that and saying, I am just going to pass on buying. I'm going to rent. And we can see that in the data, especially on the list price under 700,000. So 
it's, it's, there's a lot of pain out there, guys. With that, I hope you guys have a good rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.